hey guys it's me carib thank you so much for tuning in welcome to my channel i wish the circumstances were different if you're new to my channel but if you have been following me you already know why i'm in this hospital bed and the title of the video says it all i just had a baby like a few hours ago um well not a few hours ago um but almost 24 hours ago and so there's a backstory to all of that but full disclaimer, um, I'm in the hospital and I'm the only one in my room. I know Ron plans on stopping by. So if I stop the video, it's because either a doctor or a nurse is in here or something like that. And then I may continue tomorrow or continue tonight. I know the lighting here is really poor, but I want my thoughts and feelings to be as authentic as possible. That is why I'm talking to you from the hospital bed and not from my house well done up well put together now you know how i am i do a lot of a lot of journaling so i over the few days that i was here because i've been here for days that was not the plan i did a lot of writing i wrote letters to um my my children abney and so because i was so scared i didn't know what was going to happen to me um i did a lot of documenting updating stuff that could just be the anxiety i don't know but that is what i've been that is how i've been passing my time here so <clears throat> oh god that hurts that hurt really bad <clears throat> i went in for um my three hour glucose test on may 21st so i think that was a thursday now if you know anything about being pregnant the reason why i went for my three hour test was because i failed my one hour test and i don't fail stuff that really bothered me the week prior when the nurse called me from my doctor's office and said you know i failed by seven points i think they like seeing you at a 140 at best 135 and my score was 147 now, if you have been following me um, for at least a few weeks, you know, I have been suffering with hyperemesis gravidarum as well. So my diet was crappy. It was real crappy. And I was always eating like high carbs. If I can eat and keep anything at all, it was always high carbs. So I know that is not the only factor in gestational diabetes, but I distinctly remember the night before and the morning off. I had really, really high carbs. So with that said, I failed by one hour and I had to go into the office to do this three hour glucose test. And uh, that turned into something else. So fast forward, next day to do my three hour glucose test. Um, I got to the office, uh, you know, you check in and then they decided to take my blood pressure. Of course, that is standard. And at the moment, at the time, the nurse freaked out. She literally freaked out and she was like, oh my God, this can't be right. So when she said that, I started freaking out. And she told me to sit right there. She was gonna go to my doctor and um, see what she wants us to do. And so the doctor was like, take it again you know maybe it could just be white coat hypertension hypertension you know with it being that high y'all i'm itching because that's another story um but you all just have to put up with me um she said it could be white coat or it could just be my true blood pressure manifesting you know and i've had issues with my blood pressure during this pregnancy like you know if you listen to my old videos you know you already know that i have been medicated for that because in pregnancy is very serious and even though i don't like prescriptions i'm not a fan of the script i'm doing what i have to do to have a a happy ending well i was trying to do that so anyway um so i sat there and you know i, I did my glucose test and everything my three hour but my doctor simultaneously was addressing or she was trying to address my hypertension and the numbers at the time were like 
60 something over 90 something okay that's i'm gonna be very honest with you guys that's where i was as a pregnant mommy so um they didn't like that so at the office simultaneously they decided to do a non-stress test on the baby okay and it was ideal because i was there for three hours to do a glucose test but the sequence of events probably made my whole situation worse i sat there and they keep checking my blood pressure every 10 minutes and y'all i'm telling you whenever i hear that cuff go off i get like a little flutter i get flustered and it spikes and that just kept going on and on and on for a solid two hours until i had the guts to say no more i can't i'm probably gonna have a panic attack if y'all keep doing this and they stopped okay but i told her my doctor that i'm gonna go home get my bag and secure ebony and all of that stuff because you know ron works and i just can't ignore the fact that ron has a job and not come back home so she gave me the stink eye and rightfully so i went back home i decided to go to the lake and my blood pressure actually dropped now it didn't drop to 120 over 80 okay that's another thing that is not going to be everyone's magic number when my blood pressure gets that low i have issues and my doctors know that but um it dropped significantly so i was like eh, you know i'm just gonna stay home okay and guys i'm not laughing it's really a serious matter so um instinctively though i decided to finalize my hospital bags and everything that night the only thing that i didn't do was place them in my vehicle i forgot to do that i left them in the guest bedroom and i forgot to place them in my vehicle forgot but they were packed mm -hmm. so anyway um my doctor then of course on that thursday appointment scheduled me to see the high risk specialist because of my blood pressure readings so i went to see the high, high risk specialist on the following day which is a friday i made notes you know me i make notes and um when i sat in her chair her assistant her medical assistant took my my um my blood pressure and her reaction was like oh, this cannot be right she started freaking out she ran to the back then i heard the doctor say what literally like that she's a hoot but i love her and um so at that time i knew it was serious i knew it was serious so they came out they calmly walked me back to get an ultrasound she said she needs to make sure the baby is okay because the way my head, my blood pressure was running um baby might be in distress okay but the day prior i actually did pass the baby passed the stress test um I eventually got results where I passed the glucose test. Um, as a matter of fact, they had called me the day after to tell me I passed the glucose test. And um, so sitting in the office, she was trying to figure out, you know, she was like, she literally said to me, she was like, what the hell is stressing you out? Why are your numbers so high? And so I told her, I don't know, but she said to me on like yesterday where I got the opportunity to go to my vehicle and go home, she's not allowing that today. So what she did, she personally wheeled me into labor and delivery okay because her office is adjacent to the physician's building is adjacent to labor and delivery so she was able to like literally she didn't even ask her assistant she was the one to admit me into um labor and delivery but um so i was admitted on uh the friday the 22nd and I was just thinking, okay, um, they're going to put me on this hypertensive protocol, which they did. And everything is going to regulate. I'm probably going to spend one night. And then I'm going to go home and see my family. Yeah, that didn't happen. Um, they had me on continuous, I'm looking at my notes, monitoring. They, my blood pressure kept regulating and escalating escalating sorry okay so the reason why that was an issue whenever my blood pressure went to 
the um, perfect book value of 120 over 80, my baby's heart would stop. It would dip and it would stop. But once it exceeded 155 over 80, um, then I begin to have issues, you know, like kind of like a weird head sensation and that kind of thing. So I felt like that entire night was just trying to figure out, okay, how do you find baby's ideal versus mommy's ideal? Um, my high risk doctor called my regular OB and there was a conversation. And so they had to call in an internal medicine specialist, a nephrologist, um, a few other spe specialists just to um, come up with some sort of plan moving forward. Um, that day, everything, everything was just fast. So I had a lot of blood work to do. I had a lot of, um, I had to do like a 24 hour urine. So already I knew I wasn't going home. And that was really stressing me out because I didn't have anything. I missed my baby, Abony, who's three, but I didn't have anything and I was really unprepared. So that routine visit just became an emergency and it was actually a true emergency. So they screened for my urine, the 24 hour urine for um, preeclampsia. Uh, I'll link some information below about preeclampsia, but in a nutshell, it is something that can hit you when you're pregnant and even show up after eclampsia can show up after um, having a baby. So it's a very serious condition because it's very, very um, sudden and high blood pressure is one of those um, signs that you could be uh, suffering from preeclampsia. So they, they tested for that, but they also had to look at the protein output in my urine and other things. And they also checked for HELP, H-E-L-L-P syndrome. But I'm gonna include some of that information below. So, cause I don't wanna make this a whole educational thing, like medical terminology. Um, now, make sure I don't forget anything here. So the next day, which was Saturday, um the doctor came back and said you know and that was late on saturday that was like after the 24 hours that my urine was fine my protein output was even lower than any of my previous right i was like okay so she was like oh it's not preeclampsia and it's definitely not help because they checked for certain liver enzymes and things like that so that was that anyway um they weren't very happy with what my numbers were doing. And so for the most part, what I was told um, was that unless they can get my blood pressure to regulate between ideally 135 and 155 over 80, 90, they are not letting me go. So guys, the stress was already on. I started feeling frustrated. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. And um, that weekend became kind of nightmarish because y'all, I got on a series of drugs, like an ACE inhibitor. I got on a beta blocker. I was already taking a beta blocker. Then a calcium channel blocker. Um, I was taking like five different things. I was already taking baby aspirin and my blood pressure just would not regulate. 